guidance can come through in a number of ways. I, I do talk a lot about trying to open up and, and be as open-minded as possible in terms of receiving the guidance, but it can come in terms of feelings and intuitions. It can come in many, many different forms. Uh, it can come seemingly in words, uh, or it could be audible words, it can just be streams of thought. It can be in terms of signs and symbols in the world. I talk about billboards, bumper stickers. Um, in, for, in my case, I, I hope use the Course in Miracles as like an oracle. So I would just pray, and, and sometimes a, a, a question would formulate in my mind, and then I would just seemingly randomly, even though there's no random, uh, open the book. And, and that was a, v a very common form of guidance for me, of just going into pray, prayer and then opening the book and, and receiving just magnificent uh, guidance and instructions and directions that way. Um, I think there's so many different symbols in the world and in nature uh, that a lot of it's just paying attention and, and staying open. Um, perception is selective, so you know, oftentimes we, we stereotype and we categorize situations and people and we prejudge them and because of our prejudgments we kind of, we close out the possibility of, of guidance. And then the more we open up our minds and start to go inward, uh, we find that it's, it just comes at us everywhere. You know, we're really ready for it and we're ready to see it and it's just everywhere. I had a friend many, many years ago uh, who was so tuned in in that way that um, this was way before the Course in Miracles and way before I was even on a conscious spiritual path. But uh, we would go out to restaurants and have all these heart-to-heart -heart talks. We would be in the middle of some deep heart-to-heart -heart discussion and I would see his finger go up and I would be like, what? What's, what's, the fi what's with the finger? And there would be the speaker in the restaurant right above us and the song mm -hmm. was like reflecting or answering the very thing that we were pondering mm. and we were being sung the answer, mm. you know, in the restaurant. But I was paying attention to whatever, what he was saying or the sounds in the restaurant and then his finger would go up and then my attention would go up to the song and I'd be like, ooh, mm. we would both be hushed in reverence as the answer was sung to us. Mm. Or a lot of times uh, I would just drive around in my car and have the radio off and then just get this really strong prompt at one particular moment to just turn the radio on. And then boom, there that particular line was, was the answer. Or walking through the library and at first I did it with the Course, using A Course in Miracles like an oracle and then I I thought, oh, I wonder if I could do this with other books. So I would go to the library and just kind of get into that real open space to receive guidance, walk through, be guided over, reach out for a book, open it up, ah, it's the same thing as working <laughs> in all kinds of different sections of the library. I was getting my guidance, you know, through just, just the willingness. It took a lot of open, openness for me to just trust that the answers would would come and be given. And so, I do say that that's one of the most important things to be aware of with guidance is to just, as best you can, to just be open and attentive to the answers being given in any form in this world. Through dreams, through journaling, through art, through music, you know, through different signs. I mean, I'd be in traffic and I would you know, start to feel, formulate a question or whatever, and then I could see it on a bumper sticker, or I, I, I would just, a car would move, or a truck would move, and then I would see this big sign on the side of the truck or something, it would be like, ah, it got to be almost like a fun game of, of letting it come in all those ways, instead of just thinking I needed to hear a voice in my mind, putting all the pressure on that one way. It was very, very fun, you know, to go in that direction. And then, you know, and then I think it, 
I went through a phase where I was getting all these answers and confirmations, and then there were other times when it was just, you know, uh, like I mentioned, the synchronicities of seeing that it's all just reflections of thought. A recent trip, Lisa and I took out to California, and uh, before we left, you know, uh, Ricky was sharing her, or was selling us her silver Honda CRV. We got we got out to Long Beach Airport. We landed, and the woman Jo Allen, who picked us up, picked us up in a silver Honda CRV. And I was telling the story as the parable as we got on. I said, "Well, the first time I came out here to Utah, uh, back to do gatherings was in 1998. I came out in my silver Honda CRV." And as I'm telling the parables of now, we've got three CRVs rolling. Then. As I'm telling the parable, we look to the right, and on the highway, the LA Highway, there pulls up on the right side of us a, a silver Honda CRV, and we look over to the left, and then there's another, <laughs> we're flanked on both sides. We're in a silver CRV. I'm telling the parable of silver CRVs. Got one on the left, one on the right. And we were all just laughing and laughing and laughing, and going, well, that's pretty obvious. It's, it's just thought, you know, <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> of <laughs> being on the highway and three, with three silver CRVs rolling along together. It's, it's just showing, those are cute little synchronicities and symbols that just show the power of the mind and the power of thought. And then, deeper than that, it's more just as you rivet the mind on just wanting to be purely linked up with Source, then it's more like you're linking into a state of mind, to a glorious flow, and your attention starts to be pulled away from the forms. You know, it's just, God goes with me wherever I go. God's voice speaks to me all through the day. However you want to say it, just I'm in rhythm, I'm in flow, I'm in alignment, or I'm yielding to, to the, the source. However you want to say it, it's, it just becomes an experience that, that really draws you deeper and deeper inward and away from all the five senses. Uh, just into this deep, deep, ultimate experience that we're talking about. So the guidance, I think, is is very important. It's, it's a very important theme and topic, because it's so practical. But it's the more you can take the parameters off and the limits on how you believe you can receive it, the better it is. It just gets better and better and better. It's, you know, on on your on your coffee cup. You know, or in, a, in strange places that you would never have even imagined, you know, you just get a big smile on your face. I mean, I still laugh. Uh, we were at the monastery, it was a, I think it's a couple days ago, and I came out, and we have a Jesus statue up there. And I came out of the main house and just looked over at the Jesus statue, and in complete contentment, there was this little chipmunk just perched on Jesus' head, <laughs> and just looking over at me like, Got the best spot in the whole, the whole thing. So today, when I was trying to upload my speakers, I was moving around trying to find a where I could get the bars and everything. And I, I finally I came in to, for some one-on-ones and some calls and everything. I, I just, I put the iPhone down in Jesus's lap or right by his hand. Just say here, it's up, it's, I give it over to you. If it's going up, it's going up. If it's not, it's not. But you just have, you get playful with all the, the symbols, you know, you start to feel like it's all your mind anyway, everything's your mind, so you feel, get really playful with the whole thing, and it doesn't become so serious, you know, like, ooh, I've got to get the guidance, I've got to get the right guidance, and you know, better, you better hear it, speak louder, you know, it's, it's too much pressure that way, and, and you've got to stay real light with it. Thank you, Philippe.